Here. They told me the main desk and she was on duty. Oh, yes, but she's done for the day. I think she was planning to stop by Mr. Rooney's office before leaving. Oh, fine. Maybe I'll catch you there. Thanks. Oh, Mrs. Hardy. Welcome back, Audrey. Oh, thanks. How's the cold? Oh, it's much better. I just came by to check on things in my office. Everything in order? Certainly is, as if I'd never been away. And I have you to thank for that. Oh, no problem. Well, with all your responsibilities, that's the last thing you needed. I tell you what. As a real thank you, let me take you to lunch tomorrow, all right? You have a deal. Good. Only if Dan and I can come along. We'll even pay our own way. Wonderful. We'll make a party of it. Uh -huh. Right. Anne? Oh, no. Come on, and what's happened? Mrs. Newell? She died five minutes ago, and I see you. I don't believe that. No, neither do we. What happened? We don't know yet. I talked to in recovery, everything. Come on, come on, come on. I'm gonna take you down the cemetery. You all right, dear? Yeah, I'll be fine, I'll be. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. This is the second time you've put us in danger. Do you realize that? The second time your sister almost has caught us. Good. What did you say? I said good. Maybe I just should have let her catch me. Laura, baby, would you please listen to me? We gotta talk this thing out. You are being crazy. You can't stay in there all day. Oh, crap. You're right. I can't stay in here all day. And I'm not gonna stay cooped up in this loft one more minute either. What do you mean? I mean, I'm leaving. Put that down, Laura. You're not going anywhere. You can't stop me. What about David? He won't catch me. Well, that's what you think. I've got to get out of here, Mel. He scares me. Don't you see that? Do you think it's any easier out there, Laura, out in the real world? Where are you going to go? Home. Home? What home, Laura? Baby, whether you like it or not, you don't have a home anymore. That's where you're wrong, Mel. I still have a sister, and I'm going to go find her. And we'll leave together. What happened to this room? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't give me that. Come on, where are they? Who? Mel, Laura, David, you know. Mr. Gray is gone for the day, and I never heard of the other two. You are in my bedroom, and if you don't get out of here this minute, I'm going to call for the police. We're not leaving until you tell us where those three are. I told you, I don't know what you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Give me a secret door here or something. I know they were back here. Oh, no, no, not till we're finished. Hey, Robert, why don't you check under the bed? Sure. Check that wall over there, Jackie. Good job. See you, mate. Nothing over here, either. I'm warning you. I don't, you go ahead and warn us, but we will not leave here until we find your boss and his friends. All right, that's it. You've left me no choice. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, I am getting sick and tired of this innocent act. We want answers. What happened to all that stuff that was in here? What stuff? The electronic stuff. You know what I'm talking about. The metal table, everything. As you can see, there's nothing back here but my bedroom. Luke, will you come on? This place is going to be alive with police all any right. second. We're through playing games, Dammit. Where did they go? Who? My sister. And your boss. I saw him come in here earlier. They never came out. Well, that's preposterous. I've been alone here since I closed the store earlier. Luke, today. move it, huh? In a minute. We don't have a minute. we got to go now. Come on. Both right. of you. Okay, all right. We're coming back. We will be back. You'll be back. Give us a couple of minutes to decide, Lee. Look, say we get back to the yacht and now. Oh, no, Robert, I think we're okay here. I really do. I'm confused. I don't understand what's going on. I thought you said that they had some electrical equipment back there. There was electrical equipment when I was in there before. Well, that's a fast redecorated Look, job. I'm as confused as you are, Jackie. I want to know what's happened to Laura, Mel, and David. Well, they must have left somehow. Yeah, but how and when? Maybe through the roof or something like that. Through the floor? There has to be a trap door somewhere. I sure didn't see anything, though. I mean to say there wasn't one. If she hadn't hit that alarm, I'm sure we would have found something. <sighs> Look, maybe they did go out through the front door. No, Robert, impossible. I had my eye on the place the whole time. 
What about when you called us? That's, uh, I called from right there, Jackie, right there. I had my eye over here the whole time. Are you sure there's no way they could have got by you? I'm relatively positive. Of course, they could have gone invisible. Well, then there's got to be a way out through the back alley. I checked everything. Now, if it's possible, I am human. I could have missed something. Well, we're going to have to wait on that one. The cavalry's around. What? Right. One patrol car, two cops. She's letting them in. Well, that's a chance. Hey, that wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Just a second. Just a second. She's letting them in the back. Oh, no. Do you think she's going to tell them about us? I think it's highly unlikely. She's following orders from Gray, and I really don't believe he wants any cops involved in this. Well, look, I don't think it's a good time to hang around and find out. I, I, I really don't think they're going to check over here. It's too close. Well, listen, we can't risk it. The last person we need in that case at the moment is Ramsey. Let's go back to Kelly's and let's let this blow over. He's right. All right. After dark, we'll come back. You got it. Uh, we'll make up our minds and come back. Yes. Prompt response officers. I'm sorry. I hit the alarm by mistake. I was reaching to set the clock and my hand slipped. <laughs> Quite clumsy of me, really. That's okay. We get a lot of false alarms. Charlie, go out to the car and radio back. That's a false alarm. I'm, I'm uh, sorry to have bothered you. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. It's a good alarm. We heard it four blocks away. Oh, yes. The, the owner had it installed when, when he had the new locks put in. Is she around? She? The owner. We'll need the name for the report. Oh, it's, it's a he. But he wouldn't like to be involved. Is, is a report really necessary? Afraid so, ma'am. Standard operating procedures. All right, then use my name. Hester Frumpkin. F-R-U-M-P-K-I-N. Hester. Mm -hmm. False alarm. Section 2102. Oh, is that all? That should do it. Keep these doors locked. Oh, I will. And thank you, officer. We'll find our own way out. <laughs> Where are you? You're the one... You are the one responsible for Spencer being on our trail in the first place. The only reason we almost got caught was because you went out for coffee. Oh, fine. I don't care anymore, Mel. Blame it on me. But I tell you what, I'm sick of this cloak and dagger routine, and I'm leaving. No. Let go of me, Mel. Please, Laura. Please what? Baby, please, don't leave me now. I'm sorry, Mel. It's too late. Sorry, but well, I haven't heard anything more. I understand Anne was close to her. Yes, I'm afraid so. Mrs. Newell's little girl in Germany. I'm in the same class at school. Oh, Steve, I'm glad you're here. I came right up, Dan. How's Anne? No, I took her to the cafeteria. Seems she's gotten very close to the woman in the last few days. Yes, I know. Audrey told me. Has her family been notified? No, no, no. I talked to the husband just before this happened, but he was leaving the house right then. Then he has no idea. We tried to call him back. There was no answer. He must be on his way. I see. Rough business, Dan. Yeah, I know. A woman so young is always such a waste. Steve. Oh, oh. Steve, you're probably hurt. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Arthur. Yeah, I just don't understand it. I mean, everything went so beautifully. I was just getting ready to leave when they called me from ICU. Has Mr. Newell arrived yet? No, we're still waiting for him. How's that? Well, she's still very upset. She just wants to be alone for a little while. What happened? It appears like it's a heart attack. I ordered an autopsy. She's doing so well in recovery. I don't understand. That's what I was just saying. The procedure went so smoothly. I mean, there were no complications. We didn't have the slightest indication. Must be something we didn't know. I just don't get it. I don't, I don't understand it. Well, when something like this happens, it's always difficult to accept. Dan. Yeah. Excuse me. 
Excuse me, I'd like to see Mrs. Francis Newell. Are you Mr. Newell? Yes, that's right, Ed Newell. Would you come with me, Mr. Newell, please? Yes. Dr. Bradshaw? Mr. Yes. Newell. Oh, <clears throat> Mr. Newell, I'm, uh, I'm Arthur Bradshaw, and, uh... Mr. Minger. I wonder if we could have a word in the lounge. Sure, something wrong? Uh, it, it's right over here. I'd like to join you for a good hour. Sure, sure. Please follow me. <clears throat> this can be such a painful floor to work on. How do you mean? Well, the last time I was here, we were waiting to see if Ruby was going to pull through. And before that, we were waiting to see if that girl in OR was Laura Spencer. You shouldn't have let her go, Mel. You heard. Enough. Look, you can't hold me here like some sort of prisoner. You leave me no choice. Look, I won't be your worth of this to anyone, I promise. I wish I could believe that, Laura. I'll leave town. I'll leave the country. I'll be out of your hair forever. It's impossible, Laura. Laura, don't. Stay away from me, both of you. Put down the hammer, Laura. No. You're only making matters worse for yourself. No, I'm not. I'm going to get out of here tonight. I am sick and tired of being chased by crazed security guards and crazed husbands and even my own sister. That part is your own fault. These bizarre antics of yours. Shoplifting, going out when you're not supposed to. Attempting to keep me at bay with a useless hammer. Well, then let me go. Let me leave. That's all I'm asking. I already told you, I can't. Why not? We're already too far into the project. And much to my chagrin, you're a, a very big part of it. Oh, really? Well, if I'm such a big part of it, then how come I can never know what's going on? If I told you something, would that help you to cooperate? It might. You'd forget about this idea of running away and put down the hammer? Maybe. Laura, it's what you've been begging for all along. Well, I get to be a part of the project. You already are. No, I mean a big part. Important, like you and Mel. Once you know the plan, you will become, as the rest of us are, essential to the success of the project. Then explain. Very well. But if you breathe a word of it outside of this room, I guarantee you one thing. You'll never see your sister again. Inexcusable, just inexcusable. I'll take care of it. Hi. Look, it's not my fault. No one said it was, mate. Uh, we were that close to her. It was just kind of inexcusable. Will you stop using that word? You sound like a grammar school teacher. Would you like a beer? Well, well this is high elementary high. enough. I mean, we should have been successful at least with this one. Inexcusable. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks. They've got to have an escape hatch. Where? Well, somewhere. We just need a closer look. Well, that's why we'll go back as soon as we think the police are left. Somebody please tell me what you're talking about. The back room. Oh, you mean Mrs. Frumpkin's bedroom? Well, it's not Mrs. Frumpkin's bedroom. There's a lot of electronic equipment in there. Yeah, look, if she hadn't hit that buzzer, now we'd have got the others. Yeah, you're right about that. It was simple. That simple. <laughs> that simple? I'd hate to hear complicated. Now, tell me what happened. And in English, please. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Thank you. I saw David Gray, Mel Wilson, and Laura Templeton go into the antique shop. I saw the old lady take them into the back room, so we thought we had them covered. Well, at least we thought we had them cornered. The back room? Are you talking about uh, with all the electronic stuff, the one you were just talking about? Hmm. Yeah, same room, wrong description. You see, when we broke in there, all we found was a lady's bedroom. What? No sign of any of the stuff I saw before. Yeah. That means there has to be another room or some escape route. Either that or they've got the fastest decorator in the West, mm. or the East well, in this particular case. That is not even the point. I mean, the point is, how did they get out without us seeing them? Well, I'd say that must have been through the wall or into the alley somewhere. Could be through the wall that faces the museum parking lot. Yeah. Or better yet, through the clothing store on the other side. All right. <laughs> now that covers the ground floor, so it's just below ground or Roof above. of the basement. Right. Well, looks like we've got our work cut out for us. Shall we go prowling? Well, ready here. And here. Jeff? Sure. All right. <laughs> you got it. Okay. All right, listen, we got a lot of ground to cover. Let's go. Martha, put it on my tab. Bye. Bye. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, thank you, darling. Oh, Jesse, ready to go home, are you?
certainly am. Tell me, how's Mr. Newell taking it? Well, about as well as could be expected, Steve. Uh, Noah gave him something to help him relax. Good. It's not going to be an easy night for him. Never is. Mm -hmm. Nice, Steve. Good night, Jessica. Reggie's night. What do you mean? Well, you're all your pacing. I mean, you always pace when you're edgy. Your presence doesn't help, Monica. Oh, in that case, I'll stay a little longer. You waiting for someone? I'm waiting for my ride. Oh, of course, a little woman who's going to pick you up in her little car and take you back to your little cottage. Well, you'll have a little martini and she'll fix you a little dinner and you watch a little television by your little fire and fall asleep in her little arms. Are you finished? Well, there was a little more, but I decided to table it, considering your mood. Oh, gracious, you're so kind to me, Monica. I know, I know. I have been rough on you lately, haven't I, Alan? I wouldn't exactly call selling the Quartermain House a sign of respect. I'm not worried about me, Monica. It doesn't matter. This is my mother's home. Poor Charles is her home. Do you understand? I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. And that's all you have to say? Yes. I love Lila very much, and I'm truly sorry if I hurt her. But at this point in time, my happiness is more important. What makes you think that a change of environment is going to be able to change your life, Monica? I'm sure going to hope it is. And you know as well as I do, Alan, that it isn't living in any ordinary environment in that house. Come on! Your whole family has made that place is elevated into some sort of monument to the Quartermain tradition. What's wrong with that? Because the Quartermain tradition is a lie. That's what's wrong with it. It is based on nothing but selfish greed. And I learned that from you. And if it takes me the rest of my life, I am going to rid myself of all the viciousness that has been instilled in me by your family. You blame everything on everybody else, don't you? You accept no responsibility for anything. Pathetic. Nurse, excuse me. If a lady comes looking for me, will you please tell her I'm in the cafeteria? Yes, doctor. Oh, what flattery. I haven't heard Susan called a lady in ages. You're pushing your luck, Monica. I'm warning you. Good, because that's the whole idea. Joke's over. That's my son's house. That's why I gave it to you, because of him. That's where he's going to grow up. That's where he's going to be raised, whether you like it or not. Got it. Good night. Sit down. Have you ever heard of a hologram, Laura? Yeah, they're what they use at the movies, aren't they? They're much more than that, much more. They are the laser projection of a three-dimensional image. The concept has always fascinated me, but the actual process has never been perfected. So that's where Mel comes in. Yes, exactly. His lens invention has taken the hologram that important magic step further. He has added incredible realism through the perfection of a natural color system, an element totally lacking in holograms up until now. And not only have I made the color natural, but I've been able to make the images life-size and movable. In other words, we can make and project an image that will pass for reality. In the past, photography has only been a mere depiction of what is real. Now we're actually able to recreate lifelike images. So that's what happened at the jewelry store. You project, projected an image of the tiger into the, into the jewelry store so that when it was gone, mm -hmm. people still thought it was there. Precisely. Uh-huh. That's really incredible. We think so. Gosh, you're a genius now. Yes, he is. And he could have taken and sold his patent or to places like amusement parks and, and the like. But instead, he chose to work with me. Why? Mel? Because David here offered a more immediate and substantial reward. And he can still sell the patent later. Okay. So the hologram that got messed up at the jewelry store was for the test run for the, the big heist, the main event. But I still don't know what the main event is. Darling, it's going to make us richer than our wildest dreams. Well, everyone keeps saying that. But is it worth the danger? Is it worth the risk? Yes. Is it worth putting my sister in jeopardy? 
It certainly is. All that, my dear, and much, much more. Sign of a light. Or the police. Well, I'm sure the old bag doesn't want badges around any more than we do. Okay, let's get the business. Okay, now we're looking for like a secret passageway, right? Take the uh, wall next to the museum parking lot. Okay. Robert, the roof will be yours. And uh, you can take the alley. Huh? Oh, no, no. I told you I'm not taking another alley, Luke. I mean it. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, I'll take the alley. Okay, okay. I'll the chick at the basement area. Right. Okay, I guess that leaves the clothing store for me then, right? How appropriate. Now listen, just keep the browsing for a minute, huh? It's a thrift store, Robert. I do not buy thrift clothing. How is she going to get in there? That's a good question. Leave it to me. I think that's what they worry about. Never fear, darling. I brought all my credit cards. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Tiff. Right. We just got through saying this is not a shopping spree. I'm well aware of that, darling. I'm going to pick the lock with my credit cards. <laughs> I learned how to do it in a film that I did once. It was called Steal Me a Million, and it was starring who was it? Hey, it, nobody it was cares, honey. I was nobody just trying uh, to get we, we don't have time for okay. any caps or movie reviews. Now, do we all know our assignment? Yeah, so let's do it. Let's get to work. Okay, okay. be sure to keep the noise down. I'm sure the old bag is waiting for us. Meet me in the alley when you're through. Okay. 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 else what's bothering you just about everything sounds to me as if you don't want to talk about it thanks very much dan there isn't really very much to talk about you know brian i think i'll get a refill for myself sounds like a good idea audrey audrey what's the matter you know you, you try to make some sense out of this you try to Look for a reason, but you just can't. It doesn't help. The only thing that remains is the awful truth that it should never, ever have happened. No, but it did. But well, what's just supposed to go on and, and ignore it? As if it never happened? Everyone has to deal with death in his own way. But as a nurse, you're obliged to deal with it in private, darling. Oh, but it would be so easy just to turn the other way, to go on with the job. I can't. Oh, hi, Mom. Audrey. Oh, hello, Sarah. How are you? What are you doing here? I'm taking you up on your offer for dinner. Huh? Oh, my goodness. I forgot. I forgot. Sweetie, sit down. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. What's wrong? <sighs> there was an awful tragedy here today. Mrs. Newell died after surgery. You mean Jody's mom? Yes, yes. Look, I want you to do me a very, very special favor. I want you to be extra... Nice and helpful to Jody. She needs all the friends she can right now. Of course I will. Hi, Jeremy. Oh, hi, Noah. How's uh, Mr. Newell? Oh, he's uh, he's resting upstairs. Are you getting ready to leave? Jeremy and I are going to have dinner. Can you put down? I'd like to talk to you for a while. I was all right with Jeremy. Follow me. Follow me. All right, Jeremy. Come on. Come on with me. Get some hamburgers, all right? All right. Thank you. You'll be strong. Yes, I'll. Let's go. See you later. Take care now. See you. How are you feeling? Fine. Good, because uh, Mr. Newell would like to talk to you. Ready to go? I can't. No, you just asked me to pick you up. The car's out front. I know, I can't go now. I have a patient coming in. Emergency? Uh, yes, an emergency. I, um... Uh, whenever I'm finished, I'll catch a cab home. Is there anything else you'd like me to do? No, thank you. I'm fine. 
See you later. Sorry. What emergency, patient? I thought you were waiting for Susan. No. But you said you were waiting for... I'm waiting for Monica. Monica? Monica. I see. Well, I better get back to the office. Dan, thanks for the coffee. All right, Fran. Oh, hi, Mr. Newell. Uh, can I get you something to eat? Uh, no, I'm not hungry. This is, uh, Ann Logan's nurse I was telling you about. Yes. Hello. Nice to meet you. Why don't we sit down, huh? Now, has been telling me how you and my wife had become friends. Yes, my son and your daughter are in the same class. Yeah. I wish we could have met under other circumstances. I know. I want you to know how sorry I am, Mr. Newell. It's funny. What? I can't cry. You'd, you'd think I could cry. Is there anything at all we can do, Mr. Newell? Just one thing. Tell me why. I'm, someone could tell me why this had to happen. Can I drive you home? Yes, please. I have to see my daughter. I'm glad to have met you, Anne. I mean that. Bye, Mr. Newell. Bye.